Good evening. Welcome to a NYNJP, a weather educational video on the North Atlantic Oscillation. And this is the current forecast as of November 20th, when the day we're doing the video. And you, as you can see, the North Atlantic Oscillation is going into a negative phase, but it's expected to rebound towards a neutral to slightly positive phase by the time we get to December 1st. Why is that? I'll explain why in just a moment. But first, what is North Atlantic Oscillation? Well, the North Atlantic Oscillation is a measure of pressure in the Northwestern or Northern Atlantic compared to the polar regions, specifically around Greenland. So when you're dealing with the North Atlantic Oscillation, what you're basically measuring is whether or not the pattern is being blocked up in the Atlantic. That would translate to a stormy and cold weather pattern for the eastern United States, or a warm one if it's positive. So first we're going to take a look at what is a North, negative North Atlantic Oscillation. And these images are courtesy of two locations, NSEP, NASCAR, and also the illustrations are provided by the uh, University of North Carolina, which has done a wonderful job here with its analysis. And it's pretty basic here. Basically, what you're looking for in a negative North Atlantic Oscillation are below normal heights over the Northern Atlantic and above normal heights over portions of Greenland and Northeastern Canada. Now, there's a little bit of a misnomer in that people believe that a negative North Atlantic Oscillation, regardless of the intensity, leads to cold and stormy conditions. Cold, yes. Stormy, not always. The reason why is sometimes you get what's basically called too much of a good thing. You get very strong upper level low over the northwestern Atlantic, let's say around 50 north and 50 west, and it's so strong that it suppresses the storm track to the south, leading to cold and dry weather conditions. The optimal scenario for a North Atlantic Oscillation storm pattern, if it's around negative one standard deviation, right around here, that means it's not too strong to suppress the storm track, but strong enough to block up the weather pattern and lead to interesting situations along the eastern United States. Of course, when you have a negative North Atlantic Oscillation, regardless of the strength, you end up with very cold air because you have very cold air that is locked up around the Northwest Territories and the Yukon Territory in Canada, and that cold air is driven south. Why? because you have an upper level low that's around 50 north and 50 west, right around here, and you have a strong ridge around Greenland and over portions of northeastern Canada. Those winds lead to a northwesterly flow from basically northwestern Canada right into the central and eastern portions of the United States. And as you can see, it's almost like air conditioning here. You flip the switch and that cold air comes flying on down. This type of pattern also is typically associated with what's called a negative Arctic Oscillation because you have above normal heights towards the Arctic and below normal heights towards the mid, towards the mid latitudes. But position matters. This is an illustration again from North Carolina University of an East base and a West base negative NAO. Basically, it's a measure of where are the low pressure and high pressure centers located. In an east base negative NAO pattern, you have a strong upper level low more towards Iceland. The ridge is more towards eastern Greenland, and that translates to more of a trough towards, let's say, Missis the Mississippi River Valley. That translates to cold air rushing into the central plains, but it also leads to a ridge building along the east coast, right around here. So basically everything is shifted east, thus east based negative NAO pattern. So what you end up with is a pattern in which you have the coldest air focused more towards the Great Lakes and towards the Northern Plains and not so much towards the Eastern United States. It's still chilly, but not as chilly as you can get. Now a west based negative NAO pattern is much colder and much stormier. For one, you have your blocking high basically right around northeastern Canada. That leads to a very strong surface high pressure system 
right over the St. Lawrence River Valley and around Maine. It also leads to a very strong upper level low around 50 north and 50 west. And what that means is that a storm, let's say coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, is forced to track along the coast and stay close enough to the coast to produce heavy precipitation, possibly snow, and also to move slower than, let's say, if this was a positive North Atlantic Oscillation in which the storm will be able to just fly right out into the Atlantic. Typically with a negative NAO pattern, especially a west-based one, you end up with a powerful ridge building over portions of Alaska, a trough around the Aleutian Islands, and a bit of a split pattern here with the subtropical jet stream. This also corresponds to very cold temperatures driving into not only the central United States and the southern plains, but also the eastern United States. This type of weather pattern, a west-based negative NAO weather pattern, is associated with many of our most famous winter storms. Now, on the other hand, a positive North Atlantic Oscillation is, well, very warm for the region. The heights, the above normal heights, start to shift more towards Scandinavia and portions of Northern Europe. You have a lower pressure more towards Greenland and just to the north of Iceland. And you have above normal heights along the East Coast. You end up usually with below normal heights over Western Canada and into the Western United States. And this type of pattern typically translates to very warm weather conditions for the eastern United States. And we can see that with above normal temperatures over much of the eastern United States. And the reason why is pretty clear. Again, all your cold air is locked up over portions of Canada. So as a result, with a pattern like this, where do you think the trough is? The trough is right over the western United States with a southwesterly flow over the eastern United States. So a positive Arctic North Atlantic Oscillation combined with basically a positive Arctic Oscillation leads to typically warm weather conditions for the eastern United States. Now there is a connection between the Arctic, the North Atlantic Oscillation in positive and negative phases and sea surface temperatures. Typically when you have prolonged periods of positive North Atlantic Oscillation patterns, you end up with a cold Atlantic with warmer water more towards the eastern United States. On the other hand, the negative phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation typically features warm water over much of the Atlantic and cooler water, not necessarily cold, but just cooler relative to the rest of the ocean towards the eastern United States. Now, there's always kind of a chicken and an egg type of discussion here. Which came first? Does the sea surface temperature anomalies drive the North Atlantic Oscillation? Or does the North Atlantic Oscillation drive the sea surface temperature anomalies? Or perhaps they, bo they do both. Perhaps what this sea surface temperature anomaly sets up is the ability for the North Atlantic Oscillation to feed back on itself. And when it's in that positive phase to, to feed back on itself, you see this type of setup. And when it doesn't, you see this type of setup. So when we take that into consideration, look at our current sea surface temperature anomalies. Warm temperatures, generally over the northern Atlantic. Cooler relative to the rest of the Atlantic towards the United States. And warmer water towards the central and uh, Central Atlantic and Eastern Atlantic. Here is our warm water right here and when you take a look at the again at those observations it's a carbon copy of what you usually want to look for to support a negative North Atlantic Oscillation for the upcoming winter season. So when you see this type of sea surface temperature anomalies take place here what this typically suggests is that once you get a North Atlantic Oscillation going and the weather pattern is favorable for it, that the North Atlantic Oscillation is going to be, a, it's going to be difficult to transition to a, a positive phase once we actually go strongly negative this upcoming winter, if it does so. Of course, there's other factors to consider, namely the stratosphere. 
Let's see here. This is a perfect illustration of the of how the stratosphere influences the North Atlantic Oscillation. There's some people out there, and I'll rena leave that nameless, who don't believe the stratosphere has an impact on the North Atlantic Oscillation. This would be incorrect. Now, it's not the primary driver, but it does have a significant influence. Now, first of all, this is from Science Daily that uh, provides this excellent illustration. Well, I make sure that's out there. What this illustrates is here's our stratosphere, here's our polar vortex, here's our troposphere. That's where we live, and then down here's the ocean. So basically, the idea is simply this when the stratosphere is cold, the polar vortex is stronger. And as a result, with the stratosphere being cold, you have less exertion pressed down on the troposphere. So as a result, when the troposphere is influenced by a cold stratosphere, what you end up with as a, as a result is a weather pattern that supports higher heights towards the mid-latitudes and lower heights towards the Arctic. Think of it this way. You have the stratosphere that is compressing because it's colder, okay? As a result, the troposphere is able to expand further up into the atmosphere. That leads to above normal 500 millibar heights. That, in turn, leads to a stronger polar vortex, and as a result, more likely a positive North Atlantic oscillation. On the other hand, when the, Arctic, when the stratosphere is warm, there's more pressure pushed down onto the troposphere because the stratosphere is expanding down towards the Earth. Remember, the atmosphere can ex expand out into space. So as a result, there's more pressure pushed down on the troposphere. You end up with lower heights towards the mid-latitudes. And the support for, this is the important part here, below normal 500 millibar heights towards the northern Atlantic and above normal 500 millibar heights towards the Arctic because the polar vortex is forced to weaken. So that's how the stratosphere influences the North Atlantic Oscillation. Again, it's not the only factor, but it's a major one to consider. Now, when you're looking at the stratosphere as a whole, this is another great diagram, again, from Science Daily. And again, when you have above normal heights towards the Arctic, that forces colder air down towards the mid-latitudes, towards Europe and towards North America. And so as a result, you end up with building heights towards Greenland and you get your negative North Atlantic and negative Arctic oscillations. So when you consider that, let's take a look at what's happening right now. We'll go to 70 millibars, which is the edge of the stratosphere here. And currently we have a weak negative North Atlantic oscillation. And what do we have in place here? We have above normal temperatures over the northwestern Atlantic, cooler temperatures, although not terribly too cool, over portions of the North Pole. So you end up with the capability of developing a weak North Atlantic, a negative North Atlantic oscillation. Now remember, location matters. If this was let's say over the mid-latitudes, this cold anomaly here, you would not be supportive for a North Atlantic Oscillation that would fall into a negative phase. It all depends on how the stratosphere is structured and where the forcing and rising motions of the stratosphere are located. When we move 10 days out, now remember the forecast supports more of a positive phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation. Well, when we look at the forecast of the stratosphere, you see this cold air expanding. So that means what we should see happening is that as the stratosphere as a whole cools, the 500 millibar heights will also rise, supporting more likely a positive Arctic Oscillation, a positive North Atlantic Oscillation, and theoretically a colder weather pattern. However, with very warm stratospheric temperatures developing towards the Aleutian Islands, you're going to set up the potential for a northwesterly flow, so you end up with a cold yet dry pattern and a progressive one at that. So that's how the stratosphere influences the North Atlantic Oscillation. So just to backtrack and just to remind you, when you have a North Atlantic Oscillation and you're looking at those heights, 
What you're looking for are below normal heights over the northern Atlantic, above normal heights around Greenland and over northeastern Canada. This is a negative NAO pattern. There are two different types of negative NAO patterns. Again, a negative NAO pattern leads to cold temperatures over the eastern United States typically. Those cold temperatures are dependent on whether you have an east-based or a west-based negative NAO pattern. An east-based negative NAO pattern forces the cold air more towards the plains and towards the eastern Great Lakes. As a result, you can see that right here. As a result, you end up with near normal temperatures over the eastern United States and a storm track that is more progressive in nature. A west-based negative NAO pattern is basically the jackpot that you're looking for. You end up with an upper level low around 50 north, 50 west, high latitude blocking over Greenland and over northeastern Canada, and below normal heights over the eastern United States, and really over much of, north of the United States and North America, and very cold temperatures moving from Green, from northwestern Canada down into the central and eastern United States. And on the other hand, when you have a positive North Atlantic Oscillation, you end up with a very progressive pattern. Storms are more likely to cut up towards the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River Valley. You end up with a warm weather pattern for the eastern United States. I hope that helps explain what is a North Atlantic Oscillation and how it impacts your weather in the eastern United States. Thank you for taking the time watching this video, and as always, you can follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and LinkedIn. I'm your meteorologist, Stephen D. Martino. Have a wonderful day, and as always, stay safe out there.